Welcome, and thank you for joining me while we explore the symbolism involved in the Taurus new moon. This is a mega Taurus new moon. It has six planets in the sign of Taurus. We have Jupiter at zero degrees, the North Node at two degrees, Mercury at six degrees, Uranus at 19 degrees, the moon at 28 degrees, and the sun at 28 degrees. This is a huge Taurus stellum, and Jupiter just entered the sign, so that is the planet of expansion. And at zero degrees, it's got more of an impact than any of the other planets. It's one of the things about a planet when it enters a sign, when it's within those first three degrees, they have a bigger impact. And we also have the North Node at two degrees, which has a big impact. So this chart is a very busy chart. There's a lot going on with it. And it wouldn't be surprising to see some economic challenges happening or instability happening around this new moon because Taurus is what actually is in charge of the stock market and economy and money. Taurus is the sign that rules that. So volatility there is definitely a possibility. The sun and the moon have a lot going on here too. Not only are they in a supportive sextile to Mars and Cancer, they're conjunct Uranus and sextiled by Neptune in a supportive trine by Pluto. Whatever disruptions we have been experiencing are, our conscious, willpower, and subconscious are focused on them exclusively. So we are going to be really focused on the disruptions that Uranus is causing in Taurus. And all of this is being amplified by Jupiter that has just entered the sign. Mercury is conjunct to Jupiter and the North Node, so our mind is focused on the future. Keep that in mind when we go through the symbols. Venus is simply trying Saturn. Our hearts are what is keeping us from leaping towards potentially destructive action regarding the disruptions that we're experiencing. Mars, our willpower, in particular, is not dealing well with this new energy. He squared Jupiter, opposite Pluto, and opposing the North Node. He's digging in his heels, refusing to consider the future. He wants to fight. And Mars is in Cancer, so he's defending the home. Saturn, aside from what I've already covered, is sextiling the North Node. Saturn might be hitting the brakes, but this is the divine will. Retrograde Pluto is at zero degrees. And it's very busy as well. Zero degrees of Aquarius. In addition to that, Pluto is sextiling Neptune and Pisces and square the North Node. The media may be using the fall of the systems that Pluto dismantled to resist the destined future, but Pluto is heading back to Capricorn for one last revision of his work there. So we can expect some failures of some institutions to continue. And it's going to be very marked because Pluto doesn't go into Capricorn very much. But it's going to be just enough to cause a lot of disruption. And then it will back up and go back to the Aquarius. So that is our astrology, folks. It's going to be interesting. This particular chart has a lot of positive aspects. And they outweigh the negative. So it is a... I wouldn't say balanced chart, but it is a chart where there is more good than bad. It's not a horrible new moon, but it is going to be a disruptive one and an eye-opener. And it foreshadows a couple of weeks that are going to be difficult. The two months or two weeks around this, two months, two weeks around this particular new moon are very disharmonious and we're going to have a lot of disharmony in the following weeks until June and in the month of June it's beautiful beautiful energy for a few weeks so we just have to make it through those two weeks here in May but it's going to be a lot of disruption and a lot of disharmony before that and this new moon foreshadows that so with that out of the way We are going to 
go into the symbolism of our cards. In the indigenous tradition, it is the new moon, flower's moon, and this is the third and last of the eastern direction of air. It is kind of ironic that we do have a Gemini moon for this particular one because it's normally Taurus, but new flower's moon is associated with Gemini, and this moon is happening on the last day of Taurus, so that's why all this is going to be involving air and that's why we have the yellow coloring is in honor of air in Gemini, even though this is a Taurus new moon. And so the new moon, the flower's moon, is our indigenous moon. It's a time when spring is at its full potential. We have life bursting forth around us everywhere. And... We are moving into the future with positivity and abundance. The next card I want to go through with you is the Lover's card. Now the Lover's card is the card for Gemini and it has Zane there at the bottom there, the Hebrew letter associated with this. And the woman represents the subconscious and the masculine represents the collective or the consciousness of man and the intellectual aspect, the analytical part of our brain. And the angel represents the higher self. And it is at this point that we are associated with the concept of fixation in alchemy. And I will go into that when we cover the third moon in our 12 steps of alchemy videos or synchronizing the 12 systems as I like to call it. So that is our tarot card associated with this moon. The Hebrew letter is Zayn and Zayn represents the sword, the sword of Saturn and this will be a subject of a meditation that I have coming up. But it's really removing that sword and learning to learn, use that sword and wield that sword for the positive and greatest good of all that is part of the path of the seeker. So Zayn, like I said, is the sword. It is also the word for time in the Hebrew language. And so both are associated with Saturn and that's Saturn's very present in the Gemini season, even though Gemini is ruled by Mercury. For our Oracle card, we received Fairies of the Future by Brian Froud. And I think that is the one thing that everybody is going to be focused on with this new moon is the future and what the future will provide. I think there's a lot of uncertainty right now especially as we face like the artificial intelligence question. We have the Ukraine war. We have so much going on. The financial instability that will probably be brought about by these couple of weeks, starting off with this major Taurus stellium. And so this card reminds us that we are creating the future today. So much as we like to look to the future and just plod along, this card invites us to actively work with the future and to find, plant the seeds that will grow in the future to fruitfulness. So that is our oracle card for this particular new moon. Now I am working with a few stones here. For my grid, I have this gorgeous smoky quartz, and that's going to be my generator at the center. I have this beautiful natural lapidolite. This is for calmness. The smoky quartz is for transmutation of this energy. 
And the lapidolite is a calming stone. This is a brow chakra stone, so it calms the mind, keeps us from overthinking, which is a tendency to happen during Gemini season. And this particular new moon, I think there is going to be a lot of overthinking. And then we have this beautiful hypersynth chip that I've worked a lot with over the years. This was the only piece of hypersynth that I had for a long time. And it has this really pretty silver metallic sheen to it. And that is a stone for our anxiety and calmness as well. We're going to see a theme here. I now have this hypersynth ring that I don't think you can really see the beauty of it here either, or the flash that it has. But I also have this piece of jet, and jet cools your fires, it cools you down. These are all grounding root chakra stones, hypersynth and jet. And then I have Eudolite, which is this beautiful heart chakra stone that brings in calmness and peace. And so we're going to be working with Eudolite as well, or at least I will be working with Eudolite this new moon. And then I will also be working with Dragon Stone for courage. Since this is going to be a difficult two-week period at the very least when it comes to the astrology. And then this is Kumbhava Jasper. And Kumbhava Jasper is the stone of the shaman, but it is also the warrior stone. So I consider it the peaceful warrior stone. It brings in courage. I'm also going to be working with Lavender for Calmness and the Diffuser over here. And finally, I'm going to end this particular new moon video with a little bit of sage since we do have such difficulty coming our way in the coming weeks. Just want to clean and clear, bring all of you some positive energy to work with this new moon because it's going to be a doozy. That particular combination of all those Taurus stalliums and with Pluto at zero degrees, this is this is a big one, guys. Like this is this is where the Earth changes, basically. Big Earth moment here with all the stellium and Taurus, and because it's going to be the initiation of Gemini season, you know there's going to be a lot of communication swirling around, and it's going to be intense. This is one way to end Taurus season is to have such a huge stellium in Taurus. And we have a lot of beautiful energy coming up, but it will be a difficult moon cycle. So just be prepared for that and sending you all so much love and blessings. Bye for now.